Hello everybody, welcome to or back to my channel. Today we are obviously jumping into another weekly vlog. However, this one is sponsored by an absolute fave of mine and that is Book of the Month. So before we dive in, let me tell you a little bit about them. If you've been on my channel for literally any amount of time, you already know that I have a very deep, deep and long lasting love for Book of the Month. I absolutely adore them so much because they go through hundreds of different new releases every single month to bring you the top picks which you then get to choose which one of those would end up being your book of the month but they also think about people like me who can never just pick one i can never settle on just one which is why i have two right here and you can actually get add-ons to your box as well and you can just have the more the merrier when it comes to books which is honestly as you can see my feelings towards books they are such affordable prices for new adult hardcover releases i absolutely love their thrillers they are the best i have found so many new favorite authors books series through them so i highly highly recommend and if you would like to try them out you can use my code and and link that are down below and get your first box with some money off of there and yeah thank you so much to book of the month for sponsoring today's video and let's get into the week hi starting the vlog with the headphones in let me pause my ambience i am still wearing the same and i own it i don't care i don't care and i am still obsessed with these nails like i just they're so cute anyways happy monday you guys it is 2 45 um i hope you're enjoying the day off if you have it off if not i hope it's still a good day for you um i've started this bad boy whoa there you go empire of the vampire um, I would love to finish this this week. That'd be really cool. So I'm going to try to not read multiple books at once. We're going to see how that goes. Uh, however, just a quick little hello. Okay. Uh, I finished The Bone Season last night at like 11 and then I passed out to sleep. I gave it five stars. I really, really liked it. I do not understand any of the complaints. I don't, whatever. I'm on my own little island of just, this was such a good time. And you know why that is? Because I've stopped looking up other people's reviews. Like, unless it is someone commenting on my video, or it is a friend of mine that also reads and read the book. I don't know what the people are thinking about books anymore these days. And I like it that way. It's great. I honestly would highly recommend, like, just following people that have similar tastes to you. Focusing on that and not listening because you know what? <laughs> I don't know why it's just clicked in my head But sometimes there are such basic concepts and ideas that when it clicks in your head You're like why have I not thought of this like my entire life? This is so duh, but people just like to complain. They do. There are some people that just enjoy it a lot more than others and they will complain about anything and everything and even things that are like so minute and small and not even a big deal they will complain about it and in books i did not think that was the case rude awakening i had when i found the book community in like 2014 it is highly the case and i really do just predominantly see it on goodreads uh you're not really gonna see it on youtube unless you go seek out negative reviews and i don't watch negative content so i don't have that problem um, but on Goodreads, I was trying to figure out why I was starting to hate the app. Then I realized why. It's because I'm like, ha I'm half convinced people don't even like to like what they read. Because <laughs> it's, oh, like with the bone season, it was just such minute, tiny things that would send someone into like an eight paragraph spiral. And I'm like, okay, but me when I'm anxious. <laughs> and people on the outside looking in like, are you good? No. Anyways, the bone season, it was great. I really liked the slow build pacing in both the plot, the atmosphere, and the uh, friendships, relationships, everything. I liked the slow reveals of things. I liked that it truly felt we were in the same place as the character, the main character, in the sense of we were also confused and a little bamboozled with things. I thought it was interesting. I thought it really had a solid pacing where it was slow, but 
it wasn't boring because I don't know. I just feel like Paige, the main character, was one of the most fun main characters I've read from her point of view in a fantasy book in a while. And with Mista Kristoff, I have read a little bit of this already. My brain just short circuited when I saw this <laughs> Roman numeral. It's, it's the number six. Hello, but I'm on page 57 and I have read some of this before. I read it on a plane and it was great. It was very dense and I, that's how I like my French. But I don't recall enough of it. I just really remember the beginning of it when our main character, we find out like what's going on and the fact that he's essentially held in this tower. He's like the slayer of all slayers in the land. Not of vampires, but you know. And so what I know is Gabriel, our main man, Gabe, he is the last remaining silver saint. So we're starting out in essentially the future, I guess, his future. And he's being held in this like tower. He actually goes by the name Rapunzel at some point, which I thought was weird. <laughs> Imagine if that was real. You've never read this and you're like, wait, what? Let me check this out. And that never comes up. Anyhow, yeah, he's been sister snatched, imprisoned by the very monsters he vowed to destroy. And he's telling his story about his life via like interview style. You could even say, since his interviewer is a vampire, it could be an interview by a vampire. You could say, <laughs> I did say, I am really enjoying it. I do like that the banter between the interviewer and Gabriel to me is funny. I also don't mind cussing in books. I know that that is a big complaint in this one is the cussing because look y'all, I looked up the Goodreads before, before I even read it the first time. But now once I finish this, we're going to Goodreads, we're rating it and we're leaving. We're not even looking at it because I don't care. If I like it, I like it, you know? Yeah. Now we're in the part where he's found out what he is and who he is. And he is going to go be a part of the Holy Silver Order in order to defend the realm from the creatures of the night. So that's cool and spooky. But yeah, listen, I mean, a 30-year war between vampires and humans sounds great to me. I am going to keep on reading this today. This copy, just because I do get questions every time I show it, is from Illumicrate. So there is that. Uh, but I'm going to find some sprints and I'm going to uh, read this whilst I watch those. And then also just a little update that you didn't ask for. I have more of this finished. I just have to finish this part right here and then some of the details in the books and then it's done and I will be using it. And I got these tall bookmarks so that I could use them in all my fantasy. And I did just buy new ones from Amazon that I will show you guys because one of them is just straight up Lord of the Rings Hobbit ones. And it's like the entire thing is cross stitch. So it's going to be, uh, I got to, I got to work on my, the back organization because I'm getting real frustrated toward the end of this, but it's fine because I'm going to glue it and I'm not going to see it ever again. What else is happening? Oh, um, this week, I don't really think too much is occurring. Things are starting to be able to go to normal. The sickness has been lifted from the home. Um, I have Ginger. Oh my God, she is passed out on her heating pad. <laughs> Wish it was me. But we have her shot appointment tomorrow. And it's just a monthly injection she gets for being an old bat, basically. And it's great. It's great. She loves it a lot. You'll see tomorrow. And then on Thursday, the HelloFresh box is coming. And that's going to be fun. I think what I want to do this week is really do a clean out of the fridge. And then I need to clean off some Amazon packages from the countertop. I have such good intentions when it comes to returning things. However, even Amazon has a limit apparently. And I have had these boxes of books packed up to return to Amazon for months at this point. Let me see. 
if they're even salvageable. They're probably not, which means I'm just gonna have to keep them, which is fine. They were some books that I ordered from watching my favorite fantasy girly, but then, oh Lord. Oh yeah, no, I think this is like, her time has passed. All right. Well, anyways, I am gonna see about those. I'll have to do it on my computer because my phone is being annoying, but I'm gonna get to reading right now because that's really what I wanna do, so let's do that. Are you joking? Look at these. Oh my God. This is literally so beautiful. This is just in the freaking book. This is just in the freaking book. And now I don't have to look up fan art. I love that. Look at the little gargoyles. Oh, so cute. I don't think it's supposed to be cute, but they're still cute. Here is the girl back from her little appointment taking a nap on her heating pad while I am watching Real Housewives of New York. And I'm gonna start this for a little chill vampire read whilst I also am reading this. I did switch to the US version because it is so, so much easier to actually physically read. Like the, I don't know how to explain it, the spine and everything, but. It just is. It just is. So, I probably will not keep this edition, but I am reading it for now. And I'm liking it a lot. We should actually talk about this. Okay, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna keep y'all long, okay? I'm not gonna hold you, hold you hostage for very long, but a little bit. Last night, I sat down and I listened to this for like two hours, three hours straight. And I decided I'm going to listen to the audio while I read along with it because I want to take my time and just kind of chill. And I listen to the audio on two times speed, sometimes 1.75, but mainly two times speed because that's, that's still slower than I read without an audio, but it's enough to keep me interested and following along. I read about a hundred pages an hour if I I am just reading on my own, no audiobook, and I'm not distracted, I'm like in the zone. I'm reading it a lot slower now because of the audiobook, it's slowing me down. Not a lot slower, but it is slowing me down. And I actually don't mind it. I think it's kind of fun. It's making me take my time. I'm keeping up with things well, and I'm just enjoying it a lot. I think also there are French, what have I heard so far? French, Scottish, and British accents thus far, and the narrator does them, and I really like it, and I think it's cool. This is an edition I got from, I think, Obsidian Crate is what it was called, but it's signed by the author. And I'm just gonna read it with this um, US edition because the binding is easier and I don't wanna ruin the binding more than it already is not attached to my actual book on the UK Illumicrate one. Sidebar, are y'all's Illumicrate, Fairy Loot, UK, Waterstones, whatever, are they all attached? Like the spines are attached like right here at the end, like where it's supposed to be attached. My US ones are all attached unless I break the spine. None of my UK ones are attached, especially my Fairly Una Luba crate. <laughs> so I don't know if that's normal, but I thought it was. All of the binding is like still together, but it's just like the hardcover book is like wrapped around it and secured at the ends. But then the actual spine, like right here, dips up and it is not attached fully. Like this is attached fully. See, it doesn't like really dip up, but like the UK ones, like arches all the way up. What's up with that? Uh, but while I am on book three of this, page 206, the only thing about this book that I'm kind of like about is 
it seems like Mr. Gabriel is supposed to be like, mm, mm, macho man, macho man, like, mm, rough and tough boy. Um, but he's like cussing so much and tr it feels like it's a little bit try hard of like, for real, like I am a total bad A, like you don't even know. I'm like, I do know, you keep telling me every single time you say something, but honestly, kind of camp. <laughs> I like it. I'm into it. So I am enjoying this a lot. Even the parts that I don't like, which is that, it's just funny because it's like over the top, dramatic. And I'm like, yes, girl, <laughs> slay those vampire demons. <laughs> Keeping in the vampire mood this week, I also want to start My Roommate is a Vampire. This is a library book and I do want to read it in a timely manner so other people can read it in time for spooky season. So I am going to start it today, right now, as I watch last week's Housewives of New York. I really love this New York reboot. I did not bother watching Housewives of Atlanta reunion. I don't care. I just watched Kempire's recap. I will link him down below so that you can just go right to his channel if you want. He is the best for any... I don't really keep up with pop culture, but I do keep up with Real Housewives, so he's great for both things, but I love the Housewives stuff he does. He's so freaking funny. He has callers on his live shows. It's just great. So I highly recommend that, and that's how I'm watching the Atlanta reunion because I cannot be bothered to watch an hour-long reunion and then watch him recap it. He's more interested recapping it. Sorry. So that's what I'm doing. Housewives of New York. Guys, hear me out. I miss when Housewives was just like a little petty, like a little shady. The drama wasn't, I don't know, embezzlement, wire fraud, <laughs> going to prison for 10 years. Like it wasn't that? <gasps> Speaking of prison for 10 years, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City starts tonight. I'm so excited for that. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Do I want to reactivate Instagram so I can talk to one of my friends about it? Uh, I don't know. Because I really, oh, I'm so excited for Salt Lake City. I just am. I don't, I love Lisa. First and foremost, I'm a Lisa stan. So I think what we'll do for dinner tonight is I will make Beyond me uh, chicken nuggies and get some McDonald's fries and a coat in honor of her. Also, I just bought tickets for Equalizer 3. So I am personally with my mom. We're gonna go see Denzel tomorrow and I'm very excited about it. It is, again, my dad era. I, I think that's just my life though. Like I think I am a father. Um, <laughs> and I probably am gonna wanna read the next Greg Erwitz book, Orphan X series. I'm probably gonna wanna read the next one, which I do have, which is Into the Fire. So that's good that I have it on standby. But yeah, just giving you a little update. I definitely think I'll finish this this week because of how fast I'm reading everything. And I, in my planner, decided that I really want to try to stay off my phone for two hours before bed. So starting at eight, ending at 10, I want to not be on my phone at all. Well, except for if I'm listening to an audiobook. So I'm listening to the audiobook of Empire of the Vampire and I can like obviously just click play and then put it down. So I did that last night and I think I might just keep doing that because this is 700 pages. So I could feasibly finish this in two days. Well, two more days. So three days total, I guess. And then a little bit, three days and some change. Okay, how about that? And have it done because just listening to an audiobook for two hours before bed, honestly, I think it's underrated using audiobooks as like bedtime stories for adults. Kids can too. I like, but we talk about kids having bedtime stories all the time, right? But adults, we should bring back story time at bedtime. But I only want like a voice actor with really good accents to talk to me about it. So audiobooks is the way. I'm loving it a lot. It's a really good time. And... Yeah, I would recommend if you like things that I like. If you've read Nevernight, you're fine to go full steam ahead and Empire of the Vampire is the same thing. Although I will say, I kind of liked the way that he wrote Mia more than the way he's writing this man, which is interesting because usually it's the opposite. Like I feel like female writers write females really well and then male writers write males pretty well, but I feel like it's the opposite here. I really liked Mia in Nevernight. I don't dislike Gabriel, but I just liked Mia more. She was cooler. I believed her when she said she was cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> With Gabriel, I'm like, okay, but prove it though. But the vampires are spooky in here. It's good. It's good.
Hello? I'm, I'm one of the girls who can put the, her, all of her hair up in a claw clip now. Yeah. Okay, so I'm wearing these glasses now. These are also Glasses USA ones that I've had for forever. They're Muse in the eyes of the creator. It's giving biblical. So uh, I, speaking of biblical, Empire of the Vampire. Oh gosh. Um, I, as you saw, went to a coffee shop this morning to do a little bit of reading before my mom and I saw Equalizer 3. And let me just say, Denzel is so good in those movies. I was just thinking, because also Expendables, I think it was, there was a trailer for that right before. And I just had this thought, do you remember That So Sweet Life of Hannah Montana? So if you don't know, there were three shows on Disney Channel, That's So Raven, Sweet Life of Zach and Cody, and Hannah Montana. And they combined them all and combined the name to That's So Sweet Life of Hannah Montana, okay? So it's basically just like an epic crossover. And I was like, what if Liam Neeson, John Wick, it's just Liam Neeson, isn't it? Like, cause I was just thinking, wait, John Wick's not his name, it's Keanu Reeves. But that's the character. Liam Neeson just plays a lot of the same characters. And then Denzel, and the equalizer. I, for, I always forget his character's name in that. What if? What if they all were in a movie and they were all getting the bad guys right in the wrongs? Would that not be so cool? I think it'd be pretty cool. But anyways, if you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend the equalizer series. I think that it is my top of that genre. I think it is. I think, I think I can say that because I just... I love it. I love it so much. And it reminds me the most of Orphan X, actually, of being retired from a kind of specific spy-like job, I suppose, and then doing good stuff to help people in need and taking out some bad guys with the skills that you learn from that job. So I do have the next one. I absolutely called it. I know who I am. So I have the next Orphan X book into the fire. And what a good little color scheme. Thanks, Greg, with two Gs for the uh, red and orange color scheme. It's very fall. Thank you, thank you. And then I also have this one. So I think I might do these two books next. And yeah, neither of them are on the TBR. I don't know what you want from me. But this one is, and I read some of it, like I said this morning, and I got to page 392. So I am officially over halfway through. Let's see what percentage I'm actually at. Oh dear. Oh, Christina started talking to me again. I'm watching the new Christina Randall video. It's about aliens. Y'all, your homework for the day is to go check out that video from Christina Randall. Highly recommend her channel. And um, then come back and let me know what you think. You think it's real? What is XB? Is that 15? Wow. Not to brag, but I know Roman numerals or whatever. Oh, I heard it in my headphones. Y'all didn't even hear it. Keeping me humble every day. So I am 54% into this book and it doesn't look like it. It still looks like I'm halfway through. That's the thing with like really big books is it just is a, it is a feat. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying the audiobook. I think it is a great narrator, like I said. And my goal is to just probably finish this one out. And then I have the next Orphan X book as like my carrot that I'm dangling in front of myself because I guess that that's what we're doing now so that I will be motivated to continue reading this. Although I really don't need to be that motivated because it's a very fast paced book. Even though we're technically, I suppose, in a slower part, it is still pretty fast paced. It's, it's, it's going. It is going. Also yesterday, I upgraded my watch and I got this new band. Oh my god, look how beautiful that is. Not my face. Isn't that so pretty? I love the way that they combined all the colors, uh, all the colors. It's so beautiful. So I am, so I am doing the sixth day of that the wheel controls how much I read video concept. And if you want to see the original, I got the idea from Miss Destiny Sidwell. And I was originally doing the video a while back, right after I saw hers, because I was like, that's a cute idea. I want another reading challenge. Let's get into it. And then yesterday, I think it was, when I was on FaceTime with my friend, I was like, you know what? Let's record a video. In that video, I had already done four days of it. Might as well do two more. Actually, we might do three more, which I feel like that makes sense to do a whole seven days. And... Yeah, I got five hours, or no, six hours for today. And I read in the coffee shop for, I guess, about 50 minutes. It felt like longer. I felt like I read a lot in that coffee shop, but it was 
it was just a good time. It was just a really good time. And I kind of want to keep going back and doing that more because I just, I don't know. There's something so cozy about just going and sitting in like a Starbucks and reading. I just love it a lot. I have five more hours to read today, which luckily I am very much enjoying my book. So that's not a problem for me to do. However, what I was thinking is I really want to go see Nun 2. Hi, if y'all don't know, while I do not partake in horror books, I feel like often, I guess, because there are some horror that I like, but the horror that I like is so specific. I really just like gothic horror. That's, that's really all you're gonna get from me is gothic horror. And I do love a modern gothic horror as well. I'm not dead set on it being um, in a past century or anything like that. I don't, I'm very, very picky with horror books. So I kind of just stay away unless it's authors I have already read and love. Sylvia Moreno Garcia is one, Grady Hendrix is one. I think that they have very good grasps on the horror genre in the way that I enjoy it. But horror movies, whole different thing, whole different thing. My two favorite franchises, thank you for asking. Uh, Halloween and The Conjuring Universe. Beautimous, beautimous, beautimous. But I've never seen none. I've never seen the none. I don't know why. I've seen every other Conjuring and Insidious movie soon as they came out, but I've never seen the Nun. So I was really wanting to watch it today, but I suppose I'll probably end up watching it tomorrow evening because I want to go see Nun 2, which comes out on Friday. And I was thinking maybe I'll go like to an afternoon showing so it's not as scary. <laughs> because it's in the afternoon and I could also, I have to go stop by my mom's house and she got a puppy. So I gotta let him out and run around. But after that, maybe I could see a movie and see The Nun. But I wanna see The Nun, the first one first, you know? Cause I feel like you just gotta watch them in order. Oh, also did get tickets to the Eras tour in theaters. Gonna go see it with one of my bestie boos. I'm so excited about it because I can't really go to concerts because of, you know, the flashing lights and just the combination of flashing lights, loudness, very overwhelming to my like literal brain, not just me as a person. I also don't like loud and dark things. Concerts are kind of both those things. So I can go to like chill concerts. I went to a Dean Lewis one no flashing lights. So that was totally fine. I just know I wouldn't make it at most of them. So I just don't go. So I'm very excited that it's going to be here. So I have to go at like 1130 to noon on Friday and there is a 130 showing or there's a 1030 showing and I could, Ooh, but that's in the loud theater. I think I should do it anyways. Is anyone else going to be in there? <gasps> there's two other people. <gasps> no, there's four other people in there. Hmm. Hmm. Do I want to do it? I kind of do. When I go to the movie theater alone though, back corner. Like I need to see all exits and all people at once, but I'm gonna do it. My mom did not wanna go with me, <laughs> fair. And my partner does not partake in these movies. Speaking of y'all, my girlies who are still here, here with me for the scary movies. How are we feeling about the Exorcist continuation movie? I suppose, not really a reboot. How are we feeling? What do you think about it? Um, I'm excited about it, but for some reason, The Exorcist, despite it being an old movie, because usually, you know, when it's an old movie, you're not as scared because the, I don't know, maybe the graphics aren't as scary or you've just seen more realistic looking things in horror that it's like, oh, this isn't as scary as, you know, I've seen recently. It doesn't look as real. It looks kind of gimmicky. I don't know what it is about The Exorcist. It doesn't matter. It actually doesn't matter. It is so scary to me. <laughs> like genuinely freaks me out. And my mom was in the theater today with me, obviously saying equalizer. And she was also saying that it freaks her out. She's like, it kind of scares me too much. And this trailer, if you are not a horror movie girl, do not, do not go watch <laughs> The Exorcist trailer for like this newest one coming out in 2023, because it is so creepy. It is so creepy. Mm -mm. So, I'm gonna go see it opening day, <laughs> but I now have tickets for The Nun, which means I do need to actually watch that movie soon. So I will do that. That's my like note to self, little homework for the night. Just such a relaxing night of watching a scary movie. And then I guess I'm gonna sit down and read some more of this and I will check in with you guys later. Okay, okay. I'm gonna let the sun 
sunshine in the day I'm trying to make this darkness go away Hi, we're in my closet because why wouldn't I tell you important life updates in here, you know? That makes the most sense, I think. Oh my god. Can you even see me well? Um, shiny forehead, front and center. Perfect. So, the day you're watching this is my first day back in the classroom. <sighs> Here's the thing. I did start teaching and I left after, like, a few years just because I was not great health-wise, mental health-wise, all the whys, and I needed to. However, I never really thought that I would not be back. I always thought I'd be back. I kind of figured I was leaving for, I never knew how long, but I was leaving for however long I needed to be able to be better to go back full-time. And the time is near. We are here. We are going back. I am so excited. Like I literally, I'm as excited as my glasses are sliding down my nose, which is to say a lot, often. And I literally just got off the phone about it. And I am now headed out to go buy every pair of pants Chico's has in stock because I don't have any like teacher's legs and I need at least three pairs to tide me over for the business casual lifestyle once again. So yes, um, to preemptively answer any questions, I'm not really going to talk a whole lot about it on here. I didn't really to begin with, um, but I just, I see the behavior. I'm not sure I understand. Me neither. I see the behavior that people have towards teachers in general and also online. And I'm not um, willing to have that come my way, to be honest, because uh, no thanks. So <laughs> in order for that, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to really talk about it too much. I will mention it in the same way that like anyone talks about, you know, having a job. I am so excited to be able to go back. Now, that is to say, Will I still be doing YouTube full time? Yes, I will still be doing this. Same, same time, same days that I always have been. I'll still be doing, you know, stuff on Patreon. None of that is going to change, save for maybe second videos of the week won't be as frequent, but we'll have to see because the position I've taken is more in the line of an instructional aide than it is a full-fledged, full-time teacher, which is what I wanted. I wanted to go back full time in the classroom, but not full time behind the scenes. And I think if you're a teacher or if you're a para or an instructional aide, whatever they call it at your school, you'll know what I kind of mean. That there is a very big difference between those two things. And yes, I'm, I'm so like, I'm so freaking excited. The first thing I did was, first of all, I ran to my partner's office and I was like, hey. <laughs> Second of all, I texted my two best friends. And I was like, guys, <laughs> guess what? Oh, we manifested it. Did we really? No. Someone else just got a different position at a different school. The Lulu era moment. We manifested it. And now I have to go buy pants. And I have to organize all of this to get, like, to even see what I can wear. I have to organize my first week of outfits. <laughs> I'm so excited. Ah. Okay. So, I am going to go shopping now. And it's gonna hurt my wallet because freaking dress pants are so expensive, you guys. And I won't buy them online because um, they always hurt my feelings. Always. And I prefer trying them on a person because I hate returning things. So, yeah. That's, we're gonna go, we're gonna go to some stores. We're gonna get some things. And I'm so, I'm so excited. Empire of the Vampire. I am, let's check. Probably not gonna keep reading this today, just being completely honest with you, because I am fully distracted, fully like over there thinking about everything else in the world. I'm 86% of the way through. I have three hours and 41 minutes left. I have about an hour and a half left of this book and I'm really loving it. I, I really am. It's phenomenal. And I think I will sit down again with it tonight to like force myself to freaking relax. But for now, we're gonna go get a pumpkin shake and espresso to celebrate the fact that I got my dream job. Wow. I'm so excited, you guys. This lighting is so awful, but I don't even care. Like, this is just gonna have to be our moment, okay? This is just our moment. I am so excited. I could literally cry, literally. I already have a little bit. Don't tell anybody. 
and I have, oh, tomorrow I get to do like a Zoom meeting call thing to discuss all the nitty gritty, all the details. But I pretty much told him on the phone, I was like, oh no, yeah. you. I mean, you can tell me the details, but I'm still gonna show up <laughs> Wednesday morning, bright and early. So feel free to send the details, but I'll be there knocking on those doors, 7 a.m. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's the update. I'm so excited. So anyways, with all of that said, for the fifth time, I'm actually leaving now. My finger is on the record button. I'm going. Literally me right now, just dancing in the moonlight. Hello, Ramona. I can't shake the simplest feeling beyond the ghost. We stand on the opposite shore. Hello, Ramona. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys what I got from Anthropology. This is a cute little thingy that I'm supposed to put like the spoon on when I'm cooking because I'm a cooking girl now. And then I also got these two glasswares because they're so freaking cute with the bumblebees and a little pumpkin yeah not to brag but i have the rice going so <laughs> watch out and then we have my little owl doing her job and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know how to cut vegetables too, so. Ooh. Well, don't look at those, because actually it look, looks pretty bad, but. <laughs> you can see me in action now. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'll show you my new technique. I just learned it from one of our greatest people of our generation. You go like this. Oh my God. Isn't that just fun? I actually almost just cut my thumb. <laughs> okay, let me stop. But look at this lamp my partner got me. Isn't it so beautiful? I'll have to show you at night, but I feel like it just makes my bedside table look so much freaking cooler. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hello, Malonzi. Okay, so now that we've got the important things out of the way, that just flashed me back to my Tumblr days. Super Hulak, raise your hand if you're a part of that movement. I was, like six times over. Anyways, I finished Empire of the Vampire last night. And no, thank you for asking, I don't wanna talk about it. Um, I gave it five stars. I did, so just so you know, I do not ever like full on sob at books. That's just, I mean the book thief I did, but come on, that's not fair. But I, I don't tend to, just because I also don't do that when I cry either. I'm a very silent crier, a very stoic crier, because I don't know, that's just the way that I am. Okay, now we, that we know each other well, when I tear up, that is my version of it, you know? And that book had me, I think I teared up every hundred pages or so, because it was like five or six things. And half the time they worked out fine, half the time they did not. And that is hard for me. So yeah, I am currently, I've just unearthed my dinosaur. Let me, can you see it, can you see it? My giant iPad and I bought a new thing for it because I want to start reading more Yona of the Dawn. I think I'm on volume three or four. I'm not a man manga girl. Like, I'll just be honest, I'm just not. I'm also not a graphic novel girl. Um, I respect the art. I think it's really cool and I love that people love it, but I am just not, it's to me, you have your favorite mediums, right? Of like storytelling. I don't love TV shows. Movies are fun. I only like horror movies though. So do I even really like, I don't know. And then I, I don't like poetry. Can't stand poetry. And it's just my thing. You know, I just don't like that. I like more of like, just, just like a novel, I guess. Like a prose filled thing. I will say I do like it when books incorporate. I always think of the Illumine files where they have like a bunch of files from computers and logs and video camera footage and all that kind of stuff. I love that, but I don't love 
graphic novels. All of that to say, also I know graphic novels and mangas are not synonymous, I'm just saying that style of storytelling. I like mangas better than graphic novels, however, that's not to say like too much, and they're not my go-to thing, but Yana of the Dawn, Ami, if you're watching, thank you for, thank you, thank you, thank you for ever mentioning it, because you're the reason I picked it up. I love it. There's like 40 volumes or something, so that's swell, ain't it? And yeah, oh, so yesterday, I started Just Another M Missing Person, is it called? Let me see. Just Another Missing Person. Yeah, by Gillian McAllister. And I DNF'd it. I think I just don't like her writing style. Her writing style is so clunky. Um, it just, the way that things are said and the phrasing of things is just, it takes me too much time to understand what the hell she's saying that I, it's not worth it. So... DNF'd that. Very sad, very sad. And now I'm kind of looking at what I want to read. Oh, but I have some bookmarks to show you. Okay, so y'all know I... My preferred state of being is influenced and I do heavily enjoy um, capitalism in the sense of like buying cute fun things, not in the sense of like an actual system that we're within. I bought three bookmarks from this Australian bookmark shop because I saw it on Rachel Catherine's Instagram. Highly recommend. I forget, oh my God. So I guess what I'm here to say is I'm obsessed with the Australian vloggers right now. <laughs> there are three of them that I just watch and they're all friends. So am I watching technically the same thing from three different points of view? Yes. Am I popping popcorn for each version? Also yes. And am I spending money on things I didn't need? Yeah, so so far I bought some skincare. Y'all have seen that. But then also these bookmarks, I, sorry, these are more important to me than skincare. <laughs> They are so cute. So what it is, is you have like this clear bookmark. So this one says, in my book era. And then there is this cute little beaded thing that you, it comes together and you tie it together. But it's so, <laughs> I gotta stop, I gotta stop. It's so cute. It is so cute. So I got the mushroom one. And then of course I did a matching mushroom bead that is not gonna show up because why would it to be quite honest with you? So there's that one. And then the last one I got is just one more chapter. And then this one I got because it literally looks like if Barbie had a bookmark and I love it. I'm obsessed with it. I love being like other girls. <laughs> my, that's my favorite. That's my 2023 end of phrase is I, not only am I like other girls, but I absolutely want to be. And if I ever become not, let me know because we need to right wrongs. Oh, my iPad is alive. When I tell y'all, look at this iPad kid. Do you see how big this is? I freaking love it. What do I even have on here? I don't even know, but you know what I do need to do? I need to update it. So we'll be in. Okay, so checking for the update there. But yes, I just wanted to show you these because I think they are the cutest diddly darn thing. This is my like fantasy bookmark. I don't remember where I got this as well, but Etsy, but I love it, I love it, I love it. So reading wise, I have two options. Jake and Ginger's hair is just everywhere. Like, and then my partner's too. And I'm just like, <laughs> never mind. My hair stays intact. <laughs> so I have The Only Survivors by Megan Miranda. I just saw Chan read this in a thriller blog and I was like, we love the same thrillers. Ooh, let me download and install. We love the same thrillers. She also read None of This Is True by Lisa Joel. That was like a six star thriller for me and she loved it as well. So that's exciting to me. That tells me that we're probably gonna like it. I also already like Megan Miranda. Oh my God, this is also on my TBR. I don't know what to tell you. I'm on top of things. But speaking of, this is not on my TBR. So this is House of Marion, I suppose. I do not know. But this is a new release. I want to say it is a YA. Yeah, Razor Bill. I think that's YA. Uh, fantasy. And it's beautiful. And Stephanie Garber is on the cover saying that it's great. So I trust Stephanie. We're on a first name basis. Don't worry about it. So I think, do I want to be... Just one more chapter or in my book era. This one would be good for my Megan Miranda book. This one would be good for this because there's like a little bit of yellow, mainly because of the new book sticker from the library. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. But we're going to pair these two together and I'm going to try it out and then we'll try out the Megan Miranda one. And yeah, yesterday y'all saw I went to Anthropology and Chico's. Listen, don't, Chico's is like gonna be, you know, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but it is worth it 
to me at least, because one thing I've realized is that the demographic Chico's targets holds the same values in clothes as I do. Technically, I'm not their target audience. Even more technically, I don't care. Because they have like this waistband thing, specifically over the tummy area that is like so comfortable. I don't know what it is, but they are like buttons and zippers, nay. Nay, nay. You, it'll look like they're there, but they're not really there. And it's very like stretchy at certain parts. And it's just dress pants and slacks are the most uncomfortable pants in the world. You can't change my mind. And I have never had an uncomfortable pair from there. However, this sucks. So I am going to talk size numbers just because American, I guess it's everywhere though, to be honest, like in traditionally female clothes, it's just all so annoying with the sizes. I'm talking American sizes. I was buying absolutely too big a pair of pants for me, which mm, checks out by dysmorphia. She's, you know, <laughs> ever present. And when I shop online, it's even worse because I'm like, I don't know, err on the side of caution. I err on too much of the side of caution because I actually think that the Abercrombie jeans that I bought, I think I bought one size too big on them, which then I'm like, is it worth it to get them all tailored or should I just, because right after I wash them, you know how jeans are tighter and then you wear them and they become looser. I think that maybe I just will have to only wear the jeans once every time I wash them, which maybe, yeah, I guess if y'all are clean or whatever, <laughs> maybe you wear jeans once and wash it every time. I don't really get my pants messy and I like to have the jeans one wear for the tighter fit and then a second wear for the looser fit and then wash them. That's just me. Um, I, Anyways, I was buying the wrong pair. I was buying wrong size. And it turns out I'm actually the super fun, awkward thing. Just some parts of a 12 are too tight on me and it's uncomfortable. Like if you're a teacher, if you have to wear kind of business casual and you're moving around a lot in those clothes, you'll probably get what I mean. But just like you have to be able to be up and down, running around, all kinds of things. And it's just too uncomfortable in those pants um, for them to be any kind of tight. But then also the size up of 14 is too big on me. And I know they're going to be baggy by the end of the day. But I'm like, to be honest, I'd rather do that than too tight. Because I think just better all around. But it's like, I hate that awkward in between sizes. It's so annoying. And then when I went to anthropology, I did get a sweater because it's it's pink, like this color pink. And I think it'll be so cute. It's such a lightweight sweater, but it is very cute. Definitely would be warm um, if I needed it to be, but classrooms are always cold. So, you know, kind of the perfect deal. And I think it would be really cute with dress pants or with jeans or with leggings or anything. So I'm very excited about that. And then I got a button down too. And I, listen, random thing, anthropology kind of, I think airs on the side of like their clothing sizes are smaller. So I typically would size up. So I tried on what I normally would buy like online. And then also I was like, oh my God, that isn't my size. So I tried on another, not my size, got to a medium that fit. I was like, what is happening? Do I just not know my clothes sizes? Am I alone in this? Does anyone else really at all? Please let me know because I feel like I just have no concept and then i see like men's pants and they do it all by inches of like your waist or whatever that's so much more logical why are we not doing that i mean i know why and then furthermore chico's if you don't know they have like their own sizing system so it's like a 0.5 is like a size 8 uh, like an actual size 8 and then a 1 is a size 10 a 1.5 is a 12 a 2 is a 14 a 2.5 is it 16? Like, it is drives me bananas because, I mean, am I going to tell you that I'm wearing a size one and a half? Yes, I am. Are you going to be like, that's not a real size? Yes, you are. But it's the one time I'm ever going to be able to say that. <laughs> but they do kind of have half sizes, I guess, but not really because they're still, they translate to other. Clothing sizes are weird. Am I alone? Am I not? Let me know down below. But for now, I think I'm going to try and figure out which book I really want to focus on. I should be having a meeting this afternoon, so I need to take care of this. And then I think I'm going to do readings for tonight on Patreon. So there are all those things. I am going to try to go to bed early. I'm going to start going to bed at 10 tonight and waking up at 6 tomorrow to get my body in the habit so when Wednesday comes, it's not gonna hurt as much but i have to say y'all having these lashes thank you ginger 
is going to save so much time for me in the morning because I'm really waking up at six so I can get my life together. And then also I'll make coffee at home. And yes, but yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I'm just so excited to have these lashes because then I don't have to wear makeup. And also I loved wearing makeup to work, but it's, I don't know. I don't know, especially if like I have to do, cause I'm a teaching assistant or a para if you um, know the lingo, but uh, I have to have duty obviously. And I don't know if that'll be lunch or outdoor or whatever. So I don't really want to have makeup on. Plus I break out way more with makeup on. All around, I love this because this makes me look awake even if I am like half asleep inside. So excited about that, but um, I'm gonna go get to reading and I'll let you know what I pick and hopefully we'll pick something so that we can be reading it for sprints, obviously. Guys, I have to show you. I have the pumpkin pie blend thingy <laughs> from Tarani. Um, I just tasted a little bit because you know it has the like seal or whatever under this i tasted some of it it tastes so freaking good so i will be making a little decaf latte tonight for the sprints with it featuring my favorite blend for decaf which is delilah's decaf and um yeah i also realized i'm gonna have to order some more of this these coffee beans because i'm gonna be making coffee at home every morning now because i'm gonna i'm gonna take the route to work that doesn't have a starbucks on the way I'm setting myself up for shush. That's the goal. Now, when lunch comes, I don't know. This actually is kind of a nice angle. You're on top of the water tank of my not frequently used Nespresso, which it's upset with me because of that, but it is what it is. Did I order Chipotle? Did I order me some Chipotle for this fine Friday evening before some sprint aroos arise? Yes, I did. <laughs> and it is on the way. So I am not gonna actually put ice in this until I'm ready for the, the whole moment. But, first of all, okay, yeah, the merch. Check it out. Not mine, Chandler's. Chandler Ainsley. We're gonna try this. I put in a pumpkin, the Tarani pumpkin sauce, and a dash of this vanilla syrup that I get from the same place that I get my decaf blend. I will say, I feel like how good or not good. This is gonna be, it's definitely gonna be based on it, the quality of the espresso. And this is my favorite. It like always tastes good. So hopefully that remains true. Not me dumping Starbucks. <laughs> There's a new barista in town. Why am I dancing like, oh. It was like the, I'm a robot <laughs> Okay. I, Jake, what are you doing? You wanna come here? Wanna come say hi? I don't know if they can see you. Oh, your little ears. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, don't mind the old dresser. We're uh, cleaning out the garage so that we can put that in there. At some point, it's really hot. I don't wanna do it right now, okay? I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> He's so cute. Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna go put this in the fridge and get everything ready on my end for sprints. And we're cut off at the head again. And hopefully the Chipotle will get here sooner than they claimed because I am super, super hungry. Like, super hungry. Girl, if 
feels were mine. Look, I could not put this thing on. Get away. I could not put this thing on cute. Look at all these bubbles. The bubbles. Ugh, y'all. It's so bad, but I'm just gonna have to get used to it because I have torn this thing up six times. And it's not dust. It's just lies. Lies and deception trapped. Um, but hi, look at the screensaver. Isn't it cute? Unlock. Boom. Is that not adorbs? I got it set up for fall. We've got a little pumpkin guy. We've got a little kitty cat. I think this looks real nice, real cute. I love it. I love it. And look, you can't see the bubbles that bad. LOL, that bad. From my window, sounds coming up like the day before. You're like a stone on my pillow. I don't make a sound when I shut the door. Hi guys, hello. So I did not update you yesterday because I, listen, I was feeling lazy, I'll just be honest with you. So I didn't update you yesterday, but we're here today. I need to clean off my glasses, so I'll do that whilst we talk. I just got back from Trader Joe's and Central and we got some groceries. As you saw, we got some flowers. I'm going to put them all together and I will obviously insert a little clip for you there. But I have to say, I already feel my mental health is like doing much better. Um, I am very much a structure person. Turns out I can't make a structure for myself to save my life because who's gonna enforce me to stick to it? Not me. Having the knowledge that I will be back in a classroom setting. And not only that, but with the structured days for most of the week. And then I can just, you know, we can have our rot Saturdays once more and we'll just sit on the couch and rot together. But Sundays are a little bit more structured too. And it just, it feels better. I've been waking up at six or seven again and going to bed nine, 10. And it's just been honestly really nice. And could I have done this without it? Yes, probably, but I hadn't so far. So I'm very excited. I love being back in the routine of going to like the grocery store on Sunday, kind of getting the house cleaned. I have assigned myself to clean 
what did I want to, oh, I want to slow vacuum the bedroom because that's where Jake and I hang out a lot. And so that's where a lot of um, both of our hair is. So I want to slow clean that. It's going to take me a while. I'll probably listen to an audiobook. I'm thinking I'm going to start a thriller. Actually, we could check it out together and see if there is one that I should start because I... I'm just in the mood for audiobooks. I'm gonna have my driving routine again, which is fantastic. I'm very excited about that. So we should look at what audiobook I want to start. I was thinking, I think I'm gonna do thriller or something spooky audio wise. So I do have our share of night. The audiobook is 27 hours. It's pretty long. Let's see if the only survivors is on audio. Oh, Yes, my library has 16 copies available. Thank you so much. Just for me, just for me. I know, I already know. So, we now have our audiobook that we will be listening to today, and that is very exciting. I have actually, so I've always been a two times speed girly with the audiobooks, but lately I've gone down to 1.75 because I don't actually know. I don't know if I have a reason, I just like it. Um, and then obviously, as you guys saw, why the heck did my computer just turn on? <laughs> Out of nowhere. Okay. Uh, anyways, as you guys saw at the beginning of this video, I got my book of the month box in. And so I do have two other thrillers that I think I'm gonna add. I'm just gonna put them on my TBR shelf because look how skinny. This one's a little chunkier, but not by much. But this one, first of all, it's a neon cover, so you already know how I feel about that. It's not even 300 pages. I sneezed from an excitement. Um, and then this one is, a, it's over 350 pages, so we'll see how that goes. But was this a, no, I don't know what that publisher is, actually. Anyways, so I have the two new thrillers for the season. I'm very... I'm very excited for that. And yeah, I guess that's it, y'all. I did start reading, oh gosh, I, I've shown you the book and we've already talked about it, but I'm about a hundred pages in now, chapter nine. And I definitely will say that this, um, it's up here. I definitely will say that this book is, it's YA. I knew that. Now, well, like, when I started it, I realized it was. And it is definitely written like YA. It very much feels like it's for a YA audience, which I'm excited about because I don't find that to be the case with a lot of YA fantasy specifically recently. That's nice, but I will have to obviously see more the further I get into it. But I, I think I'm like 20%-ish and I am liking it. I am enjoying it. Although right now, what I need to do is organize all these clips onto my computer and do all of the first draft editing. The only reason I say it is because it's so, um, just like the same thing over and over again, but that's not that bad because I don't have to listen to the sound for this round of edits that I do so I can listen to my audiobook and I'm very excited about that. I am just genuinely, I feel like I'm coming alive. Like I feel like you can feel it in the recent vlogs. Like I've just been feeling better. I'm gonna give some of that to like obviously life decisions that I've made that have helped me to feel better. But also I genuinely think I do have, you know how people say that they have the seasonal depression in like winter? I think I just have reverse. I think it's just the summer, especially because of where we are. It's just so hot. It does get to a point where it's too hot to like do anything. And it was raining so hard. We had 80 miles. It was like 70 or 80 miles an hour wind the other night. It was so big of a storm when we were driving there were so many trees that were like snapped in half it was crazy anyways i am gonna continue on with my y fantasy and then i think i'm gonna pick up another one of my fantasies here's the thing though guys we gotta come to a realization together right here right now i don't know if oathbringer is gonna get finished in this month because i have you know obviously decided to go back um to school so like i don't know if that's gonna be a realistic one because I don't want to do anything other than read it physically with the audiobook alongside it, which is the 
best reading experience but it is slower and when I am stressed I like to read a lot. Not number of books but like I like to be reading quickly because it really helps me get into the book more because when I'm stressed it takes it's like I it has to be a little bit quicker for me to get really um out of my head and into the book but when I'm chilling it's much easier for me to get lost in like a giant tome of a fantasy book but I don't think anyone's under the impression that the Stormlight like Archives is fast-paced. It's not fast-paced until like the last tenth of the book and then we're zipping and zooming but until then <laughs> it is not. So yeah anyways that is that is where we're at. I also need to set up my planners so I may also use my audiobook as a reason to do some pre-planning as well as just kind of I think I need to just set up my planners so that I have them ready for the next like a month to be honest that way we are for success because I just I, I really work so well with that structure and deadlines and timelines that when I don't have them or I have to create them myself it's very chaotic and I will either do everything in one day or I will do like barely anything every day. I don't know. I don't know if anyone else is like that, but that's why I would thrive when I was in school, like as a student as well, because I just was like, I always had something that was due. And then I would end up finishing that and then I'm like, well, might as well get to the other thing too. So I'm very happy. I'm very happy that that is back, but I'm also very much getting into the thriller mood because those are the fast paced books. So we may take a detour on the old TBR for this month and do that. The only two fantasies for sure I'm going to read are Song of Silver, Flame Like Night, and then Bonesmith. I'm for sure going to read those two because they're book club books for Patreon and then everything else could be thrillers because I'm feeling a little murdery, but let's Let's get some editing done so that's out of the way. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. Oh, the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy 